Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India This module provides information about hematuria and its management. Hematuria is defined as presence of more than 3 to 5 red blood cells per high power of urine sediment in 3 consecutive centrifuged specimens obtained at least 1 week apart. Hematuria can be gross or microscopic, symptomatic or asymptomatic, transient or persistent, isolated or associated with proteinuria and other urinary abnormalities. Hematuria is described as microscopic when red blood cells are seen only under the microscope, macroscopic when the urine is visibly pink, red or cola colored, indicating that more than 2500 RBCs are present per microliter of urine specimen. Causes of hematuria are classified as glomerular and non-glomerular. Glomerular hematuria can be caused by IgA nephropathy, hemolytic uremic syndrome, post-infectious glomerulonephritis, membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis, Alport syndrome, and lupus nephritis. Non-glomerular causes are renal or tubulointestitial, which may be caused by infection, tumor, vascular or metabolic disease. Extra renal or surgical causes, which may be caused by urinary tract infection, stone, tumor, trauma, strictures, endometriosis, benign prostatic hypertrophy, and congenital anomalies. Coagulopathy related hematuria can be drug induced or secondary to systemic disease. Factitious hematuria in females may be due to menstruation. Some of the drugs that are implicated as cause of hematuria are analgesics, anticoagulants, busulfan, cyclophosphamide, oral contraceptives, penicillins, quinine and bincristin. One should remember that red color of urine is not always due to hematuria. Other conditions can color the urine like hemoglobinuria or myoglobinuria anthrocyanin in beetroots, bowel evacuants like phenolphthalein, phenothiazines and rifampicin. Initial step is centrifuging urine sample to see if red color is in the sediment or the supernatant. If the sediment is red and supernatant clear, it indicates hematuria. If the supernatant is red, Perform a dipstick test for heme. If the test is negative, rule out betuturia, phenazopyridine ingestion or porphyria. If the test is positive, there can be presence of myoglobin or hemoglobin. If the plasma color is also red, it indicates hemoglobinuria. And if the plasma is clear, it indicates myoglobinuria. Any amount of blood in urine should be taken seriously and investigated promptly. Initial evaluation of hematuria is now considered primary care. The important questions that need to be addressed, are you getting any clues from the history or physical examination suggesting a diagnosis? Is the bleeding glomerular or extraglomerular? Is it transient or persistent? Presence of pyuria and dysuria will point towards urinary tract infection. Recent URI or skin infection might suggest post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis or IgA nephropathy. Positive family history of renal failure may indicate hereditary nephritis or polycystic kidney disease. Unilateral flank pain which may radiate to the groin indicates urethral obstruction which may be due to blood clot or calculus. 
It can also be due to renal infarction. Are there any symptoms of prostatic obstruction? Does the patient give history of recent vigorous exercise or trauma or history of spontaneous bleeding disorder or is on anticoagulation? Cyclic hematuria in women suggests endometriosis of urinary tract. Contamination with menstrual blood is also possible. African American patients should be screened for sickle cell trait or disease. It is important to decipher whether the bleeding is glomerular or extraglomerular. Signs that indicate glomerular hematuria are presence of cola colored urine, majority of RBCs will show dysmorphic appearance, presence of RBC cast, it is often associated with protein excretion with no gross bleeding. Presence of hypertension or renal insufficiency. Blood clots almost never occur in glomerular disease. If you suspect glomerular hematuria, refer the patient to nephrologist. A three tube test may sometimes be useful as more bleeding in first tube indicates a urethral lesion, second tube suggests a midstream lesion. And third tube suggests a lesion of bladder trigone. If all three show equal amount, renal, ureteric, and diffuse bladder lesions may be implicated. When persistent hematuria is the only manifestation of glomerular disease, most likely it can be due to IgA nephropathy. Hereditary nephritis, which is often associated with a positive family history of renal failure and often deafness. Thin basement membrane disease, also called benign familial hematuria. Another important thing is to document transient versus persistent hematuria. Transient microscopic hematuria is a common problem in young adults and no obvious cause can be found in most cases. Low level hematuria in the absence of other signs or symptoms does not require immediate diagnosis. It would be reasonable to repeat urine analysis in a few days time. A very important exception occurs in older patients. Even transient hematuria has risk of malignancy. Persistent hematuria in older adults mandates full evaluation. Around 5 to 10 percent of cases presenting with microscopic hematuria will have an underlying urologic cancer as compared to 20 to 25 percent of cases of macroscopic hematuria. Once glomerular bleeding is excluded, search for mass lesions in kidney, collecting system, ureters, and bladder. If there is no specific clue, an intravenous pilogram or renal ultrasound is reasonable. IVP is best test in young patients with normal renal function. It can pick up lesions such as medullary sponge kidney that is not seen well on ultrasonography. CT scan is needed for diagnosing tumors less than 3 cm. When ultrasonography or IVP is negative or incompletely defined, cystoscopy is indicated. How to manage a case presenting with hematuria? Hematuria is a sign and not a disease. Therefore, therapy should be directed at the underlying cause. Asymptomatic hematuria generally does not require treatment in conditions associated with abnormal clinical, laboratory or imaging studies. Treatment may be necessary. Microscopic hematuria will need repeated follow-up every 6 to 12 months for the appearance of signs or symptoms indicative of progressive renal disease. If the signs and symptoms are persistent, full urologic evaluation must be undertaken. Treat for specific glomerulonephropathies. Steroids can be given for rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. Antibiotics for suspected infection. Dialysis can be undertaken for severe hyperkalemia, fluid overload, and uremia. If there is gross hematuria, note vital signs and refer immediately to urologist.
A three-way large bore Foley catheter can be put to prevent acute urinary retention by blood clot. Watch out for renal function, anemia and coagulopathy. Surgical intervention may be necessary in certain anatomical abnormalities such as urethropelvic junction obstruction, tumor or significant urolithiasis. For painless gross hematuria, proceed for tumor workup. For a patient presenting with hematuria, follow-up is essential. About 1% of those with a negative initial examination will develop urinary tract malignancy within 3 to 4 years. Initial and periodic urinary cytology should be performed in high-risk patients. Repeat ultrasonography and cystoscopy at 1 year for high-risk patients is recommended. Low-risk patients are followed with serial urinalysis. So we have learned, red color does not necessarily mean hematuria. Meticulous search should be done to rule out serious causal factors for hematuria. Glomerular hematuria has dysmorphic RBCs with RBC cast and is associated with proteinuria. Non-glomerular medical hematuria has normal RBCs with proteinuria without RBC cast. Non-glomerular surgical hematuria has normal RBCs without proteinuria or RBC cast. Common causes include tumors, stones and urinary tract infections. Hematuria is a red alarm for physicians to send the patients to the urologist or nephrologist. Early diagnosis and treatment of hematuria can save lives.